Here we're being told that the rate of change of population in a city is given by this differential equation. This is an equation that has derivatives in it. And what they're asking us for, first of all, is a model for this population here. So capital P is representing the population after a certain number of time. And so on the left hand side, we see a derivative. And, uh, and so that would be the change in population over time. And what we notice is that that's equal to this scalar multiple 0.0325 times the whatever the population is. All right, so when we see a, uh, something like this, bells and whistles should go off in our head. This is um, uh, something hinting at exponential growth. And, and here's how I know that. Exponential functions, namely like e to the x, is one of the only functions whose derivative looks roughly like the original. Uh, this um, differential equation would not be satisfied if capital P was a quadratic function or any of the trig functions or a square root function or a cube function or um, cube root function or take your pick, rational function. There's no good functions whose derivative look roughly like themselves. So when they asked me to find a model for this population, um, I, I know pretty immediately that uh, it's going to be a generic exponential model. And, uh, and so we, we know this in real life as well. You know, when you're thinking about population growth in certain cities, do, isn't it true that the rate and change of population depends on the size of the population? Uh, a, a city that has more people in it will typically have more babies born every day. You know, that, that's, um, that's the argument there. So, um, so anyway, we can jump right to it, you know, if we want to. We've, we've seen this in the last video that um, this differential equation right here would lead us to a, a generic exponential model that looks like this. Capital P of T equals P sub zero, that's your starting population, times E to the KT. So this is your, your generic model here. Now, um, this K right here is our growth rate. And uh, in the last video, we unpacked this a little bit more fully, but it turns out that this number here, this 0 0.0325, that's our growth rate. That's our multiplicative factor that our population gets multiplied by to match the growth rate. And so that, that would, um, that would seemingly indicate that K is this 0 0.0325 number. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and change that out right now. 0 0.0325 T. So when you plug in a time and uh, <clears throat> multiply it times 0 0.0325, raise E to that quantity times your initial population, that'll give you your current population at that given time here. Okay, so that's, that's step one. All right, step two, um, often these questions will have multiple part problems. All right, it says, if the population in a particular year, namely 2011, was 1.4 million people in a certain city, then they ask us to predict what the population will be in 2023. All right, now, the main thing we need to remember about this is um, whenever they give us a starting year or like an initial census or whatnot, we're going to equate that with T being zero. We're going to let that be T equals zero. And so this population here will become our P sub zero. That's our initial amount. Now, as a little side note, uh, this particular example we're working is for population growth, but this same idea would work for a financial problem or, um, you know, any sort of exponential growth type, type of problem. All right, so um, let's update that model then. We have P of T equals our initial census of 1.4 million. I'll just um, uh, keep these units in millions e to the 0 0.0325 t. All right now you might say, well, Devin, how, how do you know this corresponds to um, an initial population of 1.4 million? Well, we'll just check this out for a minute. If you let t be zero, just run through the math. Zero times this uh, decimal would be zero. e to the zero is one, and 1.4 times one is 1.4. So a time of zero equates to a population of 1.4. So we're using 2011 as um, time zero or our starting time. So if we want to know what the population is in 2023, 
all we would need to do is plug in the time corresponding to 2023. So we'd have 1.4 times e to the 0 0.0325 times something. Now I'm not going to plug in 2023. That's massively too big. <clears throat> what would the T actually be assuming that zero corresponds to 2011? Well, the difference between these two years would be 12 years. So we'll let the T be 12. So we're looking at <clears throat> In, in actuality at P of 12. In other words, what's the population 12 years after 2011? So P of 12 would be equal to, let's see, we'll pop all that in the calculator. We'll do this real quickly here. I will take 1.4. Remember our units are in millions already. 1.4 times E raised to the 0 0.0325 times 12. Push enter. <clears throat> Looks like it's grown to 2.068 rounded. 2.068. 2.068. And that's million people. All right. So um, for these exponential growth problems, like what we've covered here, um, there's no telling what you could be asked. Um, I've shown you probably the two most generic questions that you're typically asked. One is just for a general model of the situation. And then uh, number two, something uh, predicted in the future. But you could be asked, you know, what's the rate of change in population in 2011 or 2020 or 23? Um, or, you know, who knows what you could be asked. But um, if you can get the, the generic model down, if you can get this base model down, from there, assuming your algebra skills are pretty sharp, you can usually go in any direction and ask any uh, or answer any question that you're asked about this situation.